Hello everyone, I'm the Nerdy Fool and welcome back to Rogue Trader. We'll be continuing where we left off last time, which was on the bridge of our ship. After newly being made the Rogue Trader, we then went around to talk to all of our crew, the various officers as well as our main traveling companions, to get a bit more of their story and how they all fit onto the ship. And that's where we left off. Now, story-wise, from what I remember, we're stuck in the system we managed to land in, which luckily was the system that the previous rogue trader was trying to get to, so we're not off course. But because we lost our navigator and our engine seer prime, we can't leave this system. So the hope is that we can find a navigator and an engine seer prime, as well as a lot of crew, to make up for all the deaths while we're here in this system, so that we can then travel elsewhere. So, to travel elsewhere, we'll be using this map, but if I recall, uh, we have two other locations that we can get to from this main cabin to explore more of our ship, and I want to at least see what else is available. So, let's head down this way to another compartment. I don't know what that means. Let's find out. Oh, just allows me to go anywhere. So I can go to my captain's quarters from here, even though there was a separate path that specifically was supposed to lead to the captain's quarters. Okay. Well, let's check out the Void Ship Shrine first. Uh, yes, take everyone, because I don't know why I wouldn't. Okay, this doesn't look too big. Let's look at all the things. We need to investigate. A power mall rests inside a glass inside the glass. The inscription let me pull up the text. <laughs> the inscription on the reliquary reads, I am wrath. I am the cleansing whosoever wields me, walks in the footsteps of Furia. Okay. And apparently we're not allowed to pull that out. Huh. We push the button. And the screen rotated, but nothing seemed to change with regards to this. Well, that goes to another compartment. Who is named here besides obviously our people? Confessor. It's about time. Confessor Adelbert. Confessor Adelbert, a plump, rosy-cheeked old man, lighting candles, taking his time with each. Glints of fire danced in his heavy, on his heavy golden aquila and in his sky-blue eyes as he addresses you, smiling. The Emperor protects your lordship. Are you here to pray, or have mundane matters brought, matters brought you to me? There's an incredibly profound quality to his voice, and he speaks with mesmerizing timber. Looks like we'll be able to ask all the questions, so I'll just start at the top. Remind me, what is it that you do on this ship? I'm the ship's confessor, your lordship. No vessel that abides the by the Imperium's law can sail the void without a spiritual guide. Even a smaller sized ship does not have that does not have a member of the Ecclesiarchy on board, entrusts all matters of faith to a layperson who is a staunch adherent of the creed. A rogue trader's flagship naturally is expected to have a confessor who comes from a line of his reverent saints, servants. I am such a one. Apparently I can't talk today, so that's going to go over well. Got to get my voice <laughs> worked. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I am entrusted with caring for the Reliquary Chapel and the dyna Dynastic Crypt. I also conduct liturg liturgies, consecrate ship's bays, and strengthen the crew's hearts whenever a dark hour is upon us, lest any of among them falter in the face of the horrors lurking in the darkness and fail in their duty. Open the reliquary of the power mall I wish to wield it myself. Ah. Okay, that's a choice. We are not trained with a power mall. We're obviously we're a soldier, we're a backline guy. We could theoretically give it to our frontline uh Oh, it's been a week. What's his name? Our Seneschal. Starts with an A. It's gone at the moment. We could trust it with him, but he also is not trained with power weapons yet. Uh 
I will ask it because we can, but I'm curious. Mostly because I'm curious what he'll say, because it is obviously a holy item, which is why it's stored here. And so we're probably not supposed to take it out and use it. Alas, your lordship, I do not know of a way to open the locks on that particular receptacle without damaging its contents. One of the ship's confessors from days past sealed the reliquary well so as to bar anyone from taking the weapon. I suppose it was a desperate precautionary measure against thieves and heretics who would seek to lay their hands on the holy relic. I am sure there exists some impenetrable secret method of unlocking this reliquary, and if I only knew what it was, I would tell you right this moment. Apparently we are just, I mean, it is our ship, and we are authorized to use everything in the sector for the betterment of the Imperium, which I suppose certainly includes anything on our ship. So even if it's a holy relic, we're free to pull it out and use it if we think it's best. It's a weird mentality, but I get it. Like, we are somewhat above the law. So even if something seems like it would be morally not okay, like to just pull out holy things that are intentionally kept preserved, we can just do it if we think it's right because we have the warrant of trade that says we can do what we want. Tell me about the dynastic crypt. Every rogue trader takes care to maintain an appropriate place of repose on board their flagship, for the ca their capital may change with the passing of centuries, but the vessel of the em emperor's anointed serves them for millennia. It is more than just a symbol of the dyna dynasty's authority. It is the source of its power. The Lord Captain's seat is in the void, whence they reign over the many lands. The Von Valencius Crypt is where rogue traders and their most loyal servants are laid to rest. As the ship's confessor, I perform the rites of burial and remembrance for the, these honored dead. Albert lets out a heavy sigh. It never occurred to this old man that he might have to send Lady Theodora on her final journey, but all is the Emperor's will. I would like to find out more about this place. Albert smiles warmly at you. I could talk about the Reliquary Chapel for hours. Is this the only place of worship on the ship? I doubt it. Because not everyone on the ship who needs to worship is going to come all the way to this one spot on the ship. Because the ship is kilometers long. There are people who never leave their floor or their local section of the ship in their entire lives. Oh, I know. There are multiple sancta on every deck where your subjects pray fervently and the clergy keeps a close watch on the firmness of their faith. This, on the other hand, he gestures around the glittering reliquary, is the holiest of holy places, where only the noblest among your servants are permitted to set foot. Iconoclast option. I want those other decks to be able to partake of this exuberance as well. Again, Iconoclast is sort of a viewpoint of what's best for the crew without regards, or in some ways against the belief in a god or religion or churches. So it's sort of an atheistic point of view, but I don't know if atheism necessarily covers it because the gods are known. Like the god emperor is a being of power who everyone knows about, has lived for 10,000 years, probably even more. Uh, so atheism is the wrong term because Everyone knows he's a god. Same with people who are familiar with chaos and the warp would know of the chaos gods, even if they aren't really spoken of. But I, we aren't going iconoclast. And I think from a dogmatic religious perspective, I can see the purpose of not wanting everyone to have freedom to come all the way up here from whatever task they're doing, they should be able to worship at their own chapels and leave leave each chapel for its own intended purpose. Like, this is nice and all, but to have people leave their duties and walk all the way up here just so they can experience it when they have a chapel nearby feels somewhat foolish, but the same way as the Iconoclast, where... If you're focused on what's best for your people and for the ship, seems like you wouldn't want people taking that kind of time off to walk all the way over here. But I don't know. Where does this collection of sacred relics come from? Every relic we have here was either arduously 
tracked down by your ancestors, captured in battle against the Faithless, or received as a gift from for glorious deeds. A show of loyalty to the Emperor that speaks for itself, does it not? He makes no effort to conceal his pride. For our part, we keep the precious relics intact and undisturbed as we conduct liturgies and perform rites. Initiate Zeke is especially diligent in his care for the relics, though he is of common stock. He earned his position through dedication and piety. Okay, there's probably someone here we can talk to then that's this initiate Zeke. I have other questions. I will do my best to answer them. I would like to hear the Imperium's tenets from you. In a voice brimming with solemnity, Adalbert begins, Every man and woman has their place in the order he created, and this order must be followed and the will of one's superiors obeyed. Beware of witches, for they have been stained by the work. Persecute mutants, for they are perversions of the human form, and hate the accursed Xenos. So witches, I believe, are unsanctioned psychers. Any individual of any degree, any intelligent species who possesses some degree of psychic ability or powers. Not just unsanctioned. Beware of witches, and it's anyone with psychic ability, which means my character, though sanctioned, is still considered a witch, and should be beware of? Hmm. I've been stained of the warp. As the rogue trader, come on, man. And then Xenos are aliens, of course. Uh, the Imperial Creed, Imperial Creed prescribes being wary of psychers, but the Imperium needs them. Yes. The Ecclesiarchy tells us to persecute mutants, but an exception was made for navigators and psychers. Psychers are also mutants. Um, among the Adest Adeptus Mechanicus, the Emperor is known as the Omnissiah. They have their own form of worship. Do they truly share our beliefs? That is a fun question where the Mechanicum are needed and so sort of a loophole was created by just saying, yeah, the Omnissi you worship, who's totally not the same as the Emperor and is very different in how you maintain your beliefs and you don't follow the creed and all that. But because we don't want to have a giant war and kill you all off because you're needed and you're maintaining all of our weapons, we're going to just, if you agree that the Emperor and the Omnissi are the same person, then we'll let it slide. <laughs> kind of think of it, my warrant entitles me to violate the Imperial Creed in many ways. That is very true and is interesting. We can ask all of these, and so I'm going to. The Imperial Creed prescribes being wary of psychers, but the Imperium needs them. I understand. Having been touched by the powers of the warp yourself, you are pondering your own essence. Albert nods sympathetically. You are right. Without the astropaths, we are deaf and blind, and there are many other psychers laboring for the good of humanity. That is their place within the Emperor's design. But only those am among them who his light, who accept his light and have been authorized. Adira scoffs contemptuously. For once in your life, you could just admit that it uh, doesn't take the tongue calloused from prayers to handle the warp's dangers. Yeah. The Ecclesiarchy tells us to persecute mutants, but an exception was made for navigators. The Navis Noblite are different from most humans, but their differences are a blessing. They are noble servants of the Imperium who help humanity expand its great galactic domain. Do you not see this that as a higher purpose that pleases the Emperor? Yes, but also it's making exceptions to the rule. If all mutants need to be purged, then it seems strange because all mutants are heretical, all mutants are dangerous, etc. All mutants have to be purged, except for the no the navigators, and except for the psychers, and except for those who prove themselves useful. It's like, well then, are there others that aren't actually dangerous and don't need to be purged? Why can you just make random exceptions because it's convenient? And a religion that's based upon convenience is not ideal? <laughs> yeah, so the Odysseus Mechanicus worship the Omnissiah. How does that work? Most certainly, different likenesses of the Emperor and ways of worshipping him can be found across the Imperium's world, but we all believe in the One. Sure, so he's not even going to talk about the fact that their view is so different, because the Omnissiah... You will never hear a tech priest praising... Uh, the Emperor or the Holy Throne or anything. I. They praise the Omnissiah. They praise Mars, not Terra. Uh, so yeah. But he's just going to gloss over that. Like, no, no, no. It's totally the same being. Don't worry about it. 
Come to think of it, my warrant entitles me to violate the Imperial Creed in many ways. Violate? Those are not to be conceived as of his violations, a rogue trader's privileges come with a duty, the duty to expand the bounds of human influence. If the rogue trader must take responsibility for unorthodox solutions or actions in the course of performing that duty, then so be it. Hmm, it seems there are more holes in the Imperium's religion than parasites on a Grox. True, but I'm not going to say it. Because again, we're dogmatic. We are intelligent enough to recognize the holes. But... The Emperor, we know the Emperor is true. Certainly we've been to Terra and felt his influence during our sanctioning process. So no, we're going to just let it slide. That will suffice for now. As your Lordship wishes. You're positively beaming with joy. A priest like you is a rare sight. Albert laughs good-naturedly. A fair observation. Everyone knows that the clergy must maintain a stern appearance to inspire fear and awe in their flock. His mirth fades, giving way to a pensive gravitas. The truth is that my clan and I experience great hardship. I cannot explain how it is I am standing before you now, except by his will. How could one be anything but joyful knowing they were saved by the Emperor? What happened to your clan? I was scarcely more than a child when the malady struck our cabins. First would come the fever, then the unlucky victim would start retching blood. After that, they would melt away like a candle. Only the youngest survived, myself among them. He smiles feebly. But now my family is growing, and I am grateful for each new life that replaces one lost. Still, your gentle manner may adversely affect your flock's faith. <laughs> You're not showing enough doom and gloom, fire and brimstone. People won't trust you. An accurate observation from a lord who knows the importance of strong faith on his ship. The gentleness you speak of is skin deep. On the inside, my faith and spirit are pure adamantine. Decades instructing the crew in, fight, in fighting the dangers of the void and the warp have required nothing less. My resolve in the face of the monstrous threat we face may always be a hundredfold firmer than that of my flock. I have another topic to discuss. Of course, your lordship. Did Lady Theodora come here often? Your predecessor always had due concern for the reliquary's maintenance and its needs, and under her rule, faith occupied its proper place on the ship. Adelbert gives you a diplomatic smile. That is a non-answer. Uh, <laughs> She was concerned for the reliquary, and that faith existed on the ship, but there was no statement that she regularly came here to worship the God Emperor. People confess to you, do they not? I am interested to know the thoughts of some of my subjects. That could be... I mean, I don't know 40k lore of whether confessors are allowed to say what people have confessed. Let's see. Oz is a throne-fearing flock that regularly leaves Vox recordings in the shrine confessional housed in the eastern part of the reliquary. This allows us to maintain constant watch for any heretical tendencies. We can observe the earnesty with which our parishioners render their duties, as well as any dangerous dissent brewing in their minds. Initiate Clautus is responsible for sharing, sorting the confessions. He would be honored to offer you access to the confessional cogitator. Apparently we can totally just listen to the confessions. May the Emperor's blessing be with you, your lordship. All right. The Aquila Anima, a fragment of the Cathedral of Eternal Redemption brought from the shrine brought from the shrine world of Solus 4, Solus 6, I can read, now lost. And we shall offer a prayer while we're here, being the devout person that we are. You recite a prayer, the one you remember best. It's not actually going to recite the prayer. So we can see what a 40k prayer looks like. Well, we haven't seen either of those named initiates. The Imperium Invictum, the shards of an unknown and Gebian Crusade warrior's twin blades, returned from the pirate captivity by the grace of the Emperor. Ah, here's Initiate Zeke. We can examine this. 80% chance to succeed. Experience? 
Nothing matters more. An ancient looking chain sword. So did we succeed? Uh how much did succeeded? Good. An ancient looking chain sword with out a fuel engine rests on the weapon rack. The shape of his teeth makes you think of the Ulma Univers Universalis, a pattern from the Angevian Crusade era. Hello, Zeke. The broad-shouldered young priest makes the sign of the Aquila. The Emperor protects your lordship. How may I be of service? That's not going to be his voice. He's probably young. <laughs> Who are you? I'm an initiate Zeke, your lordship. I recited prayers and helped Confessor Adalbert with the rites. What is this relic next to you? The initiate looks over the sarcophagus. The skeleton within its clutching, within is clutching an orb made of many tightly fitted hoops covered in glyphs. A mysterious object, but undeniably a holy one. It was donated by a group of pilgrims who studied the legacy of the great missionary, Nadine Alin Alinkinov. They believed that there is something inside that only someone truly righteous was meant to have. One of the pilgrims was so desperate to witness the moment of the orb's opening that they bequeathed their body to us. Do you have any ideas how to open the orb? One of your prede predecessors was the, was the last to attempt solving this relic's mystery. It happened a long time ago, before Lady Theodora was born. That's all I know. Why not just disassemble it? To damage a sacred relic is, unthink is an unthinkable crime, and to use force to bypass the test of wisdom and faith it contains is terrible blasphemy. Well, open the reliquary. I am going to try to solve the mystery of the orb. The initiate opens the lock and hands you the orb. Someone has already moved the hoops around, trying to arrange the letters into meaningful sentences. It will only take a few more rotations for the orb to split cleanly into four parts, each with its own question. The answers should presumably be formed using the adjoining hoops. I'm hoping this isn't a one-time check, that if we fail it, we, you know, lose out on the item. And it's something we should save for late game when our stats are higher. I assume we can give it multiple tries. But if not, well... Oops. <laughs> Form the questions in the orb's first quarter. My light reaches everywhere. The greedy will see me in gold. The scholars in humanity's cradle. But only the righteous will see me within their souls. Okay, hey, my light reaches everywhere. Could be Emperor or Throne. Quill and Strength don't make sense for that. The Greedy will see me in gold. I mean, the Emperor is in the Golden Throne, and the Throne is gold. Aquila could be gold. Again, I don't see Strength unless they're being very metaphorical. The Scholars in Humanity's Cradle. But only the righteous will see me within their souls. I'm assuming Emperor. People worship the Emperor. The Emperor is the light. The Emperor is the righteous that -ness, the righteousness that would be in our souls, I suppose. Not the throne. The throne is a holy tool, more or less. Emperor. For better or worse, something clicks inside the orb. Oh, that doesn't sound good. You would assume opening it is always good. Okay, we can reset the orb's configuration and start over. Good. Form the questions in the orb's second quarter. I'm within every human, and my loss is feared. For without me comes the end. But give me to the emperor, and you will be eternal. The answer immediately comes to you is blood. You have spilt it too many times in the name of faith for you not to realize that it is the most precious offering one can give to him. So this one's just telling us the answer. Why? I don't see a skill check, which is what I was checking for here, to see if there was a secret roll. Well, blood. Another soft click comes from, comes from inside the orb. All right, third quarter. I am poison, I am perdition, I am disgrace. Burn me down, eradicate me, or perish, rejected by the emperor. Um, transgression, weakness, heretic, or betrayal. All of them? Um, weakness is a poison, perdition, disgrace. I'm going to go with weakness. 
like transgression. No. Yeah, I like, I think a lot of these have a very similar feel, but weakness feels like it fits the theme best. Weakness. With a click, the hoop settles into place. Uh, form the question in the orb's remaining quarter. In your body, mind, and soul, you must possess me. I am no mere absence of stains. I bring you closer to him. In your body, mind, and soul, you must possess me. I am no mere absence of stains. I bring you closer to him. Duty is a good thing to possess. Absence of stains would be purity. I am no mere absence of stains. I bring you closer to him. Then maybe not purity. Duty or loyalty, maybe. I don't think martyrdom. Although, theoretically, martyrdom involves being killed, which brings you closer to him. Maybe loyalty. The hoop shifts and returns to the previous arrangement. You'll have to start over. Do I want to just keep trying that? Emperor. Blood. Weakness. Let's try duty this time. The hoop shift and... No. I mean, I hope the click is what I'm looking for. Because we got to click on all of them. Purity? Maybe the clicks we've seen so far is just not a sign of success. Doesn't feel like it'd be martyrdom, but I'll try it. No. So... Maybe that means that one of the previous questions we got wrong. It's possible the one that it just told me the answer was blood is not actually blood. Because I didn't actually look at the other options or try to figure it out. Alright, we'll return the relic to the initiate. We can consider it later. The initiate recites a short prayer and locks the repository with great reverence. Uh... The skeleton inside the sarcophagus is holding a spherical object gleaming with gold. I wish this would stay scrolled down. Like, that's a minor bother to have to regularly tell it to scroll back down because for whatever reason it's chosen not to continue with the thread. Uh, we have not looked at this one yet. We did look at that one. Hello. Okay. A soldier would have been disciplined for such a performance. You failed. 72 out of 70. Come on, Abelard. That was his name, Abelard. A collection of antique weapons, though they are no longer fit for battle, their sight continues to inspire righteous souls to new feats of glory. I'll lay claim to the stars. What do we have here? The Rex Regalia, the partially restored blade of Zathidus the Ernest, a missionary who decimated the abominable Xenos and fell in deathly battle against the unrighteous. And you are Initiate Clotus, the one who is over the confessions, maybe? Linky Initiate is leaning over the cogitator, an expression of extreme mental effort on his face, his fish-like round eyes peering into the screen. Grant me understanding, Master. Give me wisdom. He winces as you approach. Your lordship, how can I be of service? Who are you and what do you do here? I am Clotus, junior cleric. I sort recordings from the shrine confessional to pass on to the higher ranking clergy. Tell me more about this confessional. Our parishioners come here to repent, to share their innermost thoughts and observations of the, their neighbors. The sacred machine records all confessions and alters the voices beyond recognition. Okay, so we have a list of confessions without necessarily having a any idea of who they specifically were caused by. So we just know what the general thoughts and concerns are without being able to tie them to a specific individual. All right. 
Is there a way to find out who made which confession? There is not. Clodius shakes his head resolutely. That would undermine the usefulness of it. The first prototype wasn't anonymous, so those confessions might as well have been carbon copies of each other. Everyone was impeccably diligent and pious and whatnot, but as soon as the machine spirit started keeping the name secret, the parishioners opened up. Requires heretical. Maybe adherent is a level of heretical? Obviously we're not going heretical. I suspect that would be doing something to try and get the information, even though it's, you know, not good to do so, forcing our way through the machine spirit's intent. Yeah, I don't know. Good thinking, making it anonymous. Keep up the fine work. I will endeavor to do so, your lordship. I have other questions. Well, what does your lordship wish to know? It appears you're having difficulties. Nothing escapes your lordship's notice. As it so happens, I am struggling to categorize three rather peculiar confessions. I wouldn't have dared tell you about them, but I think they may have been left by senior officers, which would make this a matter of the highest order, one that is far beyond my meager understanding. These confessions, you see, are far from being examples of pious conform conformity. Conformity. I know that word. <laughs> I dread the very thought of dissent or heresy poisoning the minds of some of the more... The most eminent members of the crew, but I cannot change what I heard. He bows his head in reverence. I cannot share this with anyone but the Emperor's anointed, nor can I allow anyone but your lordship to listen to these messages protected by the secrecy of a confession. What makes you think that these confessions were made by senior officers? These parishioners are well-spoken, meaning they are used to addressing an audience. Perhaps they issue orders and are vested with power. And well, after categorizing so many confessions, I've learned to notice the subtle differences between them. All right, let me hear them. The initiate steps aside, putting the cogitator at your disposal. Recording 17FL.2. Aleg Descent Impious Doubt. I thought there was going to be speaking, and there's not. One question has troubled me for years. Why are some destined to perish in the warp, while others must go on living and preserve the memory of the dead? Worthier, more luminous souls have been lost, and yet I'm still here. Light static is distorting the recording, but you are confident the speaker is male. Uh, record recording 134D.U, Legend Theft of Ship Property. The orphans on the ship have already been provided with the bare essentials, but every so often I consider increasing their rations and ordering more sets of clothes for them. This, that will not replace the families they lost, but it will improve their lives somewhat, especially given that the ship has poor enough resources to cover that compa comparably trivial expense. Uh, despite the poor sounding quality, you determine the voice to be male. Commerce test succeeded. You've heard the bridge officers gossiping that the high factotum has taken personal charge of the orphans. So we think that one specifically is the high factotum. Possibly all three. Recording 502M.M. Alleged coded message, irreverence question mark. Lop-eared kleppas display a high degree of socialization, both among their kind and towards their owners. These animals adjust well to avoid ships lower gravity since it is similar to their homeworld's conditions. Lop-eared kleppa meat is edible, should necessity demand it. The voice sounds muffled, as though from behind a thick layer of glass, but it's unmistakably a woman. So... These are not intended to be the same person, because obviously, having two men and a woman... If we assume they are deck officers, like the named people that we've interacted with, obviously, High Factotum, that we've interacted with... Um... A muffled voice makes me think it might be our Vox Master, because she had that Vox grafted into her face that she spoke through. And what about you? All we know is it's a male who is questioning why... Yeah, why some live and some die, even if the most righteous are the ones dying. 
Um, trying to think. I think one of the people we talked to did discuss something like that in last stream, but I don't recall. I'm wanting to say it was the Helmsman, the Voidborn guy, but I could be misremembering. But that does sound like a topic that one of them was discussing with us. I'm curious to know who left those confessions. I will seek them out. I suppose those confessions truly are special if your lordship is giving them his personal attention. The ancient bows deeply. Never would I have imagined the rogue trader himself coming to my aid. Uh, I assume this doesn't have anything new. Have you come up with something, your lordship? No. I will leave you to, con to your concerns. The initiate responds very solemnly. I labor for the glory of the Emperor and House von Valencius. The machine in the shrine confessional emits a low hum as it proceeds, pr processes the congregants Vox recordings. So then we had, did we look at this one already? Yes. Okay, then last thing to note is that when we click that button, it's shown over here and over here, and I'm assuming it's when we had someone step on this plate that the light turned on. So let's take Sister Argenta, stand here. Adira, step on that one. No. We shall prevail. What do we have on us? Fervent prayer. The character. Oh, because we prayed. The character will gain a plus one resolve in the next combat. This one will disappear after the combat ends. Can be gained after praying at the Void Ship Shrine if the character's dogmatic rank is higher than their other conviction ranks. A prayer in the Void Ship Shrine has filled you with righteous fervor. Onward to victory for the glory of the Imperium. So we just have plus one resolve in our next combat. Throughout the combat, presumably. Um, well, the light went off, so maybe it was a timed thing? Sins hidden in the heart turn all to decay. Do you want something? Let's have you step off. Those are definitely buttons. You can see them sinking in. So Argenta, with a feeling of you step there. Adira, you step there. Jokes? Jokes? And we... Of idleness, let's move. No. The Emperor sets my path. How may I serve the dynasty? Didn't seem like the light blinked when Argenta stepped on it again. Hidden in the heart, turn no, it did. Decay. How long does it stay active? Seems like for a while. Does it go inactive as soon as Adira steps on it? Yes. And it doesn't reactivate. Presumably there are five lights, so does that mean there are five we must act. things I need to interact with in here? But that's not a button, it doesn't sink down. Okay, we've got another button here. Yes. So... Does that mean... Okay, step off, step back on. Light goes on. Does it stay on even when you walk off? Is it an order thing? No. I'll have to have five people standing, and we don't even have five people. That's how I'm reading this. Just to see if I'm right, though. Adira, step on this button. Okay, and that's two lights. So yeah, between, so we've got a button there, a button here, one here. Yeah, those are our five buttons. Uh, when the they have letters on them. So we start with gross. F. Should I divine our next step? You? Uh, man, this font is J, probably. Though I could see a call for that being a D. 
Die. Might just be an I. <laughs> That's an A, obviously. What is this one? I don't know. We know we can't accomplish it until we get more people, so... I will hold off for now. There's no need to keep fighting it. That's the shrine checked out. Let's check out the chapel next. Someday we will actually travel somewhere else in this solar system. Huh. 